Welcome back to another episode of my Ultimate Iron Man. Uh, you might be wondering why I'm down here picking giant seaweed. Heck, I'm kind of wondering why I'm doing it. But uh, I mentioned at the end of the last episode that I was an idiot and kind of fought his spore without really didn't have a seed, so I cannot currently suicide to his spore, which isn't a huge deal. I mean, if I really, really need to, I can suicide to Zora, which is kind of tedious, and I don't enjoy doing it. Uh, and I'd rather just, you know, try and get his spore seed back. It, it's the easiest one for me to access. Um, and I do have a plan the reason I want to be able to suicide is because I would like to try Giant Mole. I was originally kind of against the idea because I didn't, you know, like it, it's a big grind. I didn't have Darox. You don't need Darox. Um, and I also couldn't really think of anything that's super useful on the top of my head for like why you would want to grind mole other than birdhouses, which granted would be useful for us. And I was like, wait a minute. The giant mole drops U logs, and one of the skills I want to get up to get out of like my tiers of ethic range is fletching, which of course fletching isn't that hard to do. You can either you know just chop the AFK it and kind of chop logs and make them into bows, or you can you know the more common thing is to buy broad arrows and just fletch them when you're doing other stuff, which is probably what I was gonna do. But you still need arrow shafts for that, and mole would be a pretty easy way to get arrow shafts. So I think I'd like to try that if I can, but again, it's Sunday right now. If I don't get a spory seed by like Tuesday, then uh, I'll probably, you know, pivot on that. Also, Giant Seaweed has a pretty good chance for getting his spory seed, so that's why I, uh, I'm doing that. And I've also been planning to like check on all the health of all my trees and stuff, because you see, I'm already 150k away from another farming level, which is, you know, a lot of XP we've gained. I actually managed to get a hard clue from a bird nest while I was just getting my U-logs for the birdhouses. Are we going to get anything? Um, oh, the Gothic Bracers are new. Uh, I think we already have a couple of pieces of those, but I will check in just a second. And I'm also getting a little low on nature, so I will take this. Okay, and we just had the Gothic's Chap, so it's still tied for two out of four for a god set. You may remember I made a comment when I got 91 farming because it unlocked a second spirit tree where I was like, oh, well, the one in your house counts and I already have one in uh, Brimhaven, so I can't plant another. That's not true, actually. The one in your POH doesn't count, so I can plant one. I just happened to get a spirit seed from a birdhouse, which actually isn't that rare. The wiki said it was only like one in 91, so, you know, that was, I thought that would be maybe like a lot rarer than that, but no, so... Uh, I'm gonna put it in uh, Spring Haven. Wait, what even is Spring? I don't even know. In Port Serim. Good lord. That was a mix of Port Serim and Brimhaven. Uh, the other options are uh, Farming Guild, which I used to have one there, but now that I have the Jewelry Rocks, there's no reason to have one. Uh, Karend, which is right next to a Clue, but I have a Glade Teleport, which is not that much further from that. And then at Ceteria which I have a jewelry box again. I don't know how close that is to a clue. I know there are a couple clues on, on Miscellaneous area, but it's this is definitely the best one because Port Serim is by far the option where like I'll get a clue or something where it's just like, man, there's like, like I think the closest I usually do is still, I'll either do Draenor Village or the AIQ Fairy Ring. Obviously, you know, I have the Explorer Ring. I don't do charges here, but I have to get that. So this is just nice. That's still good for farm runs, but this is nice to have. There's a lot of clues down in the, this kind of, the actual Porter's Room proper area. So I'm happy to have this one, assuming it, it grows, which is Ultra Compost. It was bound to happen eventually, but when we check this guy, that's going to be 82 Hunter. As you can see, I have switched over to Magic Bird Houses. It's only like a thousand XP more than use, maybe even not that much. Uh, so it's probably not worth it for the time it takes to get magic, but it's not, it doesn't actually take that long and I only need four of them per run. With the Dragon Axe and uh, being at the Woodcutting Guild, that's where I go to get them. Uh, it really only takes like a minute and a half, maybe two minutes, but I can just, you know, click a tree once and then keep watching the YouTube video I'm watching or something. So it is not too bad. Oh, it finally happened! It finally happened! I just got a sports seed. Also, my voice just cracked. I'm 23 years old, not getting voice cracks. Oh my god. But uh, yeah, his seed. 
Thank gosh, because I was really worried I wouldn't be able to do mole this week. But it's Monday right now. I should have plenty of time to get that done. So, well, actually, I have to wait for his spore to grow first, but I don't think it takes that long. And his spore takes a little longer to grow than I thought. It's like a day and a half-ish, so it'll be done tomorrow at 10 o'clock at night. So I'm going to be able to do a little bit of mole before I go to bed, but uh, not, not a lot. Although I will plan on Wednesday and Thursday, just like long sessions hopefully of, of mole i don't know how much i need to get like i'll do some calculations and stuff to see uh, my main goal is to finish off getting to 81 at least for right now uh, and then we'll just go through the rest since we don't have to boost anymore i mean actually if it's easy i'll keep doing it if it's if i get sick of mold then i'll just keep doing birdhouse runs or something and move on to i don't know something else but uh, for right now i'm just gonna afk u logs probably i don't want to like i don't really feel like Mole's the next thing I want to focus on in the account. You know, I don't really like, like, find something I can do for a day and a half that's, you know, more involved than this. So I'll just chop uh, wood. No, just chop wood. Chop logs. I mean, I want to try and get to 90 wood cutting just so I can AFK at Redwoods um, whenever I'm really bored and looking for something to AFK easily. I already have, I've already boosted for the diary requirement for that, so it's not super important. But yeah, um, I figured used. I know they're not the best XP an hour, but I figured for AFK, semi AFK, I'm gonna be doing other stuff on the side, not looking at the screen constantly. It's a decent chance of you know uh, the tree not depleting for a good minute or two, hopefully sometimes. So hopefully it'll be all right. I'm curious if I can get it by tomorrow night. I mean, I'm definitely I can you know hours wise, but it just depends on how focused I stay. All right, well, any second now, hopefully. I say that, although it's been a minute since I started recording. We've only got one log. Oh, there it is. That's 90 wood cutting. We can now chop redwood tree. Redwood. We can now chop redwood trees. And uh, that is probably the only tree we'll ever routinely cut again on this account. I don't know what the XP an hour is like for those. I've never actually fully AFK'd them. I've only ever cut them for diaries, really, on this account and then on leagues. So like for like a minute or two. I know it's pretty slow to chop a log, but it's supposed to be really AFK. Uh, so I guess we'll try and see how it is. There's some dude up here. Enter carve, wait, what, you can enter them? What? Oh, it just goes up even higher. Okay. Um, so I guess I'll experiment here a bit. I do have the one in the woodcutting guild. You just cut it there and then yeah, we'll see how that goes. And I, I was trying to say, I was getting like 30-ish K XP an hour. Just, oh, that's a lot of XP. Just AFK. Oh, and also I thought I had already boosted that diary, but I guess I hadn't. Well, anyway, there we go. There's the elite task for Corrin and Kevos. Um, that's not... Okay, you don't automatically move over, but it is, I think, very AFK other than that. So this is... This is nice. I could get used to this, I think. That's a good... Good freaking... Uh, AFK thing. But yeah, um, still got four more hours until Hisporia is ready, and then we're just going to move on to the giant mole. I really don't feel like I've gained this much farming experience, but this is going to be 92 farming. Somehow that just happened, and uh, you know what that means. We're halfway there to 99. Oh, and here we are finally. I don't know how long this video is yet, but it's been like oh, half a week since I said I wanted to do mole for me, and we're finally here now. Uh, this is the setup I'm going with to start. Uh, full crystal minus the helmet and the bofa. Pretty pretty normal stuff. And I do, you might notice, I have the crystal armor seed here. I haven't gotten rid of that yet, though I want to at some point. Uh, I could make that into the crystal helm. I need 50 shards, though, and I didn't really want to go grind gauntlet for a bit to get that. Uh, I did ran the DPS. It's only a teeny tiny bit. It's like 3.7 versus 3.4 DPS for not having it. Um, the biggest thing, though, I'm on accurate right now because, of course, mole can burrow. So you really want high hits rather than just, you know, overall higher DPS. It's, it's, it's a case where usually you want to be on rapid. You want more DPS overall. Um, but for this, you just want to have the most damage per shot, which you'll get for accurate. Uh, and even then, my max hit is 32 with my gear set right now, and the helmet would take me to 33. And there's only like two, it's like 66 versus 60, like 9% chance to hit, I think, something like that. So it's not huge. If I find it to be an issue, maybe I'll go grind it out, but I don't, I think this will be all right. And also, um, I ran the numbers. I need 452 mole parts 
to get to 81, which is my goal for right now, because then I won't have to boost from uh, birdhouse runs. And that's like that's like my goal for this video at least. Hopefully that that's manageable. I think you get like on average three parts per kill. I've heard, so it shouldn't be that bad. But you know, we'll we'll see how it goes. And I have the uh, Dragon Warhammer just to try. I don't know what the best practice is going to be, whether like to dump specs and just use two for one kill and then not at all, or just not try. I don't know. Well, we'll see. The wiki didn't even have it in the setup for range, but I figured, hey, I have the Warhammer, so I might as well use it for something, right? Oh, the first mole kill on the account, which actually isn't true. I've killed him for a diary before, but uh, three combat tasks for doing that. What is that? Avoiding those little arms. I think one of them is for killing them fast after they burrowed oh they got a really slow respawn time that's nice um but yeah so one kill and we got four mole parts and i don't know for sure but the wiki makes it sound like you get one nest for every single mole part you don't need like one claw and one skin it's literally so this would be four nests i got right there so i hope that is the case because that means this won't take that long this is gonna be kill number 50 at mole i'm praying to god he doesn't decide to dig okay he didn't that is good, and I'll be able to show you guys kind of my uh, my strategy for what I'm doing for mole, because I know so many people have no idea how to do it. But if I have a charge for spec, I will spec up. I usually miss. Uh, I don't know if it's just, because I mean, obviously my gear isn't focused towards melee, but I rarely, I'd probably say like one in four times I try and spec, I hit, and I don't get to spec every single kill. But uh, until then, I got a little safe spot right here that I can just run over to from wherever he spawns. And then I shoot him, and if he's nice, he doesn't move at all, and I can just kill him right here. And then there's other times, like my second kill of this trip, I oh my, it probably took like five minutes. I it, literally every single shot, they'd run away, and I have to go find them, like I do right now. So the staminas are definitely coming in handy. I was thinking like, oh maybe I don't need staminas. Oh no, you you want staminas if you are doing this boss. Like trust me. Two points I've learned so far. First, I want to make a PSA to all these clueless gamers out here, but you can actually, you can right click on the hole when you first come into mole and see if someone's in here. And then e even if you don't do that, like sometimes people like, can hop around, you can use your brain for one second and maybe like, if you come in and you see the moles like you know aggro to one side maybe wait one second before you can actually see before you just shoot it and steal the kill because that just happened for me uh but uh, other than that you know just like just try remember that other people play this game you know just it takes two seconds to be considerate you know or at the very least you know apologize or say something if you if you do that on accident but hey whatever that's that's just me uh brah get the f dude 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 a little perfect freaking example. I got more angry there than I should have. The dude finished the kill. Again, didn't say anything. He ran up here, though. I was waiting to, to spec him. But, uh, I, so other than that, the other thing is, um, I definitely think I would recommend having actual full crystal if you're doing this. Obviously, you know, a very, very small amount of people probably only would consider doing this or only have the, the top and bottom and not the, the full set. I know I'm in a special position right now as a UIM, but if you're in a similar case as me, I think the hat will be worth it. Um, I only need, like I need 450 uh, mole parts. I've already got like 100, almost 200 of them. So we're not gonna need more than like 130-ish, like 150 kills maybe, something somewhere between those. If I was doing anything more than that, like if I wanted to get enough for all of my Toad Flax, I'd definitely, definitely get the Crystal Helm. But this is, uh, it's, it's just, it's hard not to think on those times wherever he like just jumps around a million times. It's it's hard not to be like just think like oh man any one of those hits could have been, you know even with just two percent higher chance to, to hit him it could have happened if I had the helmet, and it you know you'll take every hit you can get when you're on this boss like like that look at that I mean he only went right here at this time so it doesn't really matter but it gets real annoying real fast and I think any amount of extra accuracy would be welcome here. And this should be my very last mole kill. Oh, it worked out perfectly. I could not have planned this better. 150 mole KC, and I needed 452 mole parts, which is exactly how many I have right now, if I'm doing my math correctly. Uh, and that's almost 100% on the rate of about three on average. I think two, you, like one claw and one skin is the least you can get, I think. So, but three is the average. And that 
traps 150 times three that's uh, 450 so we're just over that with 150 kills and now comes the fun part of actually making these into uh the potions i vaguely remember mudkip doing it in one of his videos before i'm gonna have to watch that again to see how it goes but i don't think it's the easiest thing in the world that's for sure but i'll uh i'll figure that out and uh see where we're, where we're going step one of uh, the giant mole bird nest method is actually something i've never done before this is a very much in theory but we want to turn our toad flax into the uh, unfinished potions which you can do this guy here or a uh, lady i think uh this person here they're going to they can automatically combine our herbs and our vials of water and keep them noted and they charge 200 gp for it so i'm pretty sure if i do make unfinished potions okay it didn't even ask me i was wondering if i'd get an option to like make x or not because i only needed 452 but there wasn't an easy way to get that many noted vials of water uh I didn't ask me though. That's that's fine though. I'll, I'll have to get a couple more like from birdhouse runs or something. But yeah, so that way we only have one inventory stop space and it saves a lot of time because it's kind of involved. You'll see once we actually go to start making the potions themselves. For the mole parts, what we do is we talk to Weiss and the gardener, and then I think okay, I'll trade in the mole parts, and then yeah, we should get three boxes. We have seed boxes. Uh, ring boxes and then empty nest boxes and I'm pretty sure you get more seeds than anything else yeah so obviously the best would be if we could have just empties because that's just going to be how how we use them uh, but the other ones have rings and then seeds in them which get very very confusing so uh, I will go get set up uh, when you extract these you just get the bird nests themselves you don't get um, they're not noted for them or anything so you have to keep them in your inventory until you use them all. So this is gonna be definitely the most involved uh, potion I've made on this account, but it's not that bad. Uh, the seeds are gonna be the most, depending on how many I save, but I don't, I haven't looked up for sure. I think they're supposed to be better seeds in general than you'd get from normal bird nests, because most of the seeds I get from bird nests, I drop. And I went ahead and just used all the empty nests because I only had like 20 of them. But to give you a general idea of what I do with the rings is I open them all up, and then I drop the gold rings. I elk anything that's not a sapphire. And then you don't have to do this, but I figured it's a decent chance, an easy way to get sapphires. And you can use them as charges for the Ring of Suffering, which I already have like 40,000 charges almost, and I don't use them that much ever. But hey, it's just doing them now is a chance. I won't have to do them later. So I do that, I put them in there, and then crush up the bird nests and I kind of forgot that I still have to boost so this would be a lot smoother if I didn't have to do that uh, but the boosting is annoying because it often runs out I don't really get a chance to do more than like one you know shot before I have to boost again uh, but in my inventory I have enough room for two greenman ales and then I just it's a quick teleport to the lighthouse to buy some more. So it's not the worst thing in the world, but it definitely could be smoother. But we only have like 72,000 XP to go. So uh, I'll just keep trucking along at this and then hopefully I will uh, be back with a level here pretty soon. And then not a level, uh, unfortunately. I figured I'd show you what it's like now that I am on the seed nest because boy, is it a mess. So it kind of starts out the same where I get the nests out, I drop a couple, go over to decant and then grab them but as you can already see you do get some seeds that are worth saving although thankfully so far the majority of them have still been kind of like junk that I can drop like this was actually pretty good or actually I mean I got a couple herb seeds because I already have a stack but I can just drop all those and then I go ahead and grab my toad flax and I don't even think it's worth it for both the inventory space and the time to carry some extra boosts on me just because it takes so long to get deal with the seeds sometimes. So I'll just come over here. And also because I want to make sure I have the most inventory space. But then I tell her home, teleport to the lighthouse, and then I just boost here at the lighthouse and make them. And then that way if I ever run a boost, I can just buy it again right here. And it, it just makes sure I never I can always get a full inventory in one trip. And it's still like, you know, a couple like a thousand or so XP per trip. So it's not uh I mean, more than that. Well, probably almost like 2,000 XP per trip. 
So it's not too terrible. It is just going to take uh, significantly more time than the uh, rings. Well, uh, what you always love to see after you just recorded the last clip of video is that apparently I didn't hit the record button, which sucks. So, uh, but hey, I got 81 herb lore. Like you knew it was coming at the end of the last clip that you, I did actually record. Uh, uh, not as you know big a deal now that I missed it, but uh, big things. I can make Cerebrus without boosting now. That's great. Um, this, the inventory management kind of got a little crazy with the seed nest there at the end, although it would be much easier if I don't have to constantly leave the GE. If I could just keep the seeds I know I want and, you know, keep building up the, those stacks, it, I wouldn't be able to make many potions at once, but I can just keep running back and forth, which is what you do for most potions. Uh, of course, with 81 herb lore, we can now make Sarah brews, but there's also another reason I wanted 81 herb lore. Uh, and it involves Herblore and also kind of Fletching, although Fletching isn't the main. Herblore, Fletching, and one other skill. Uh, that's what I'm going to be doing next episode. So you can probably guess what it is. Uh, it's not a huge surprise, uh, but it will... Actually, it, it, it's even more... It, it trains a lot of skill. It not it trains all at once, but gets me things to train other things while training multiple skills at once. It's, it's good, and I'm excited to do it. And uh, hopefully you're looking forward to what comes next as well. So, as always, thank you for watching, and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.